This is Lily, and this is Lily's roadmap to success. We're starting with this because we started to shoot this video and I realized I didn't have my mic on. So I wanna make sure everybody sees her in the video. But she's chewing a collagen stick and so she's gonna be busy while we do our business. All right, so as I reposition this, um, I'm gonna kind of summarize what we went over. So uh, basically, we started the session off doing uh, going over marker words. A marker word is a fundamental building block of how dogs learn. A marker word is an indicator that lets the dog know that it did the thing that you want. The marker word should come the instant the dog does the thing that you want, unless the thing that you want has duration like stay or potty. In that case, we want to say the marker word at the conclusion of that activity. Now, um, this is going to be really important for her because she's very determined. And there's times that she doesn't want to do things like walking or whatever it is. And so the more that we use the marker word when she is amicable and feels like doing it, the better, more of a habit that she gets into. Dogs are very much creatures of habit. The more they do something, the more they're likely to continue doing it. She's learned if I just stop, sometimes I get to go across the street in the direction I want to go. Now the guardian doesn't want her to go there because she's overly, she's a little bit older and she's tired. And when, if she goes that way, it makes the walk like three or four times as long. And that causes her to be, you know, she has a little arthritis. And so it creates issues. So in the video above we talked about, what I recommend the guardian do is practice that with a lot of treats and just consistently go that direction. Don't cross that street. Now there's a couple other variants he can do. Uh, his, uh, the guardian's girlfriend just uh, arrived. And uh, so one of the things that they could do is she could go out ahead of them with her dog, a golden, and she could drop treats. Once you get to that, I would want you to do it at that corner. So maybe you're having, you guys are following her and she's maybe at 20 feet or to 100 feet ahead of you. And so once you turn and get to that corner that, she, that uh, Lily wants to go straight, have your girlfriend take a left and take one, put it a really high value treat, one of the tricky trainers down. And then about a half a foot away, about six or eight inches away, put another one and do that for a line. So you have about four or five treats that are all about six inches apart. The dog can see that line as a pattern. And so basically then what you, and then she's gonna start leading about every foot, then about every two feet. And so this, there, I'm gonna give you a, a number of different ways of doing this. This is option one. So option one is she goes ahead of you, she leaves that trail of treats all the way down that block. So Lily, at first we had to stop and start when we were holding those treats out. Well, for, these treats are just positioned along the path. She's gonna start looking for those treats and lurching forward to get those treats. What we want her to do is practice moving forward without the lurching and the stopping. And so we don't have to give her treats each time. So option one is to walk behind your girlfriend and she's putting those treats down as she walks her dog. And then when you, uh, when you get back home, maybe you put uh, Lily in and then you go out with a little walk for her with her dog who is a little bit older. And then Lily gets to uh, just enjoy a, a collagen stick from our friends at Barkworthy's or just kind of hangs out and catches her breath while you guys go out for a longer walk. So that's option one, and that just gets Lily in the habit of taking that left and getting a lot of positive treats on the way uh, there, and because you're just a half a block apart, other dogs aren't gonna come in and grab those. Now, as you do that, you should, at first, I have them about every six inches, the first four or five, once we take that corner. Eventually, I want those to be about every foot apart, then eventually every foot and a half, two, far, two feet. Gradually increase the distance. Now, if you increase it so much where she stops, then we're getting too, we're advancing too quickly. So make it short enough, and you really want to build momentum. So maybe for a couple days we have them six inches, and then a foot apart, and a foot and a half, and then eventually they're all foot apart, and then eventually they're a foot and a half apart, and two feet apart, and eventually you know maybe there's just one you know like five feet from the corner, and then another five feet. And so you're gradually leaving less treats, but if Lily stops going, that means we're making it too Spartan. We need to have enough treats where she's motivated to want to do it. And the more that she does this, the more she's going to feel positive about doing it and the more she's likely to continue doing it because it becomes a behavior pattern or a habit. So that's option one. Option two is kind of what we did in the video. So you're going to basically uh, do the walk with me game. And I have a video for this if you need a refresher on that one. This is the one we did in your apartment where we hold, held the treat out, said come here as we step backwards. Now as we're stepping backwards, I'm saying come here and stepping backwards because come here means come to me. Once you transition and you lure her behind you and you turn her towards you and then you start going the same direction, I would have you change it to like vamanos walking, let's go. So that word means we're both facing the same direction. And at first when you do it, you're just gonna hold that treat at her lips. I know it's awkward, you're, hung, you're hunched over. Keep it against her lips. I call this the imaginary rubber band. If this is the dog's mouth 
and I hold the treat and I'm luring the dog here and the dog doesn't go for it, I pull it back. The rubber band snaps it back. You really want to try to keep that treat within an inch or two of her, of her lips at all times as a lure. Otherwise, if it gets too far away, she's like, whatever. So the idea for that is we're gonna have those treats once we can, and I would probably have you practice the walk with me game and then transition it so now you're walking the same direction. And it's step, treat, and step, treat, and you have a whole bunch of treats in your hand so you're kind of shaking the next one down and your hand is kind of staying in front of her face. I don't want you to like treat and then your hand goes way away. So you keep your hand here and you lower it. And as you lower it, that makes it more appealing for her. So if she stops coming towards it, lower your hand a little bit as you're, as you're moving away. Um, that usually will get her to come to you. Now, first, you're just going to take a step, yes, treat. So you'd first say, let's go, step, yes, treat, step, yes, treat. Now, if she was stopping in between treats, what we'd like her to do is just keep on, keep, and that's, again, keeping that treat against her lips. Eventually, she's going to be walking without the stopping. That's what we're looking for with that technique. So don't start raising it to your shoulder until you get her to walk consistently. Now, if you want her walking on your left side, you should have the leash in your right hand and your treat pouch here, and this is the hand you're delivering the treats. If you want her walking on the right side, the leash is on your left hand, the treat pouch is here, and you're delivering the treats to the right hand because you want to be right close proximity to her lips. Um, so uh, when you get to the point where she can walk and you can walk around that walk and you're pretty much, she's not stopping, but you're having to bend over like the hunchback in Notre Dame, eventually then you're going to take a step or uh, take two steps before you release the treat. And then eventually you work up to about three steps before you release the treat, keeping it against her lips. When you get to three steps, that's when I usually would take one, two steps and then boom, boom. First couple times you take it away, you want it to go boom and don't wait up here. So boom, boom, we want her to stop, not stop moving. And so what we want her to think is when I pull the treat away, that means that I'm in a bot to get a treat. So I should almost hurry up and go a little bit faster because that's the reward time. And after a while, when she gets good at doing that, then you can kind of hold it up here for a half a step and then deliver the treat. Eventually hold up for a full step. And it's not necessarily a step, it's a length of time. If you hold it up here and she stops, you might count in your head how long you're holding it up here. So if you're going a second and a half and she stops, then I go back to maybe a second. So you always want to back up to an easier level of, it, uh, of, of iterate, or an easier iteration. Um, and eventually it gets to the point where you're like walking and walking your whole five, 10, 15 steps of the treat up here. And she's just walking, looking at you, getting that treat. Um, and then you're giving her that treat. So don't go to, don't interrupt it or don't have the duration between them too, too long, too fast. Uh, cause we don't want her to stop doing it. Carrying momentum is one of the key things to do. Now, another little uh, tip or trick that you can do is instead of walking around that block is just walk on your block. So when you got your, uh, go out your door, take a right or left, go to the end of the block, and then cross the street. She likes crossing the street, and you could roll those treats, another trick that I showed you, um, to get her to cross the street. But a lot of times it's nice if there's like a little uh, a mound of treats there. Something else you can do, and this you have to be careful a bit, um, as long as she's not lactose intolerant, I like using Swiss cheese because it has the strongest smell. I get some shredded Swiss cheese, and I go out ahead of time, and I go to the grass on this side, and I sprinkle a little cachet of it over here. Then I take a couple steps and on the, uh, in between the sidewalk and the street on some grass, I do it there. Now, this teaches the dog to go look for those things. Now, the problem with this now I'm thinking about, the guardian doesn't want her eating nasty stuff off the floor. So that might be something you keep in your back pocket we use as an emergency if we need to. I think for you, just uh, the, leaving the, tra uh, the, the tree trail as you're following your girlfriend or her dog is going to be a good warm-up. Then you're going to be delivering the treats yourself, and we want her looking at you. Now, at the same time, I want you to make sure you're celebrating at home. Every time she comes to you, yes and pet her when you don't ask her to. That's a really important thing that people don't think about. Also, I would also have you practice the walk with me game up and down your hallway. Walk down your hallway, turn around and walk back home, and maybe leave a little pile of treats uh, when you start walking away. So when you come back home, she's like, I want to turn around and go back home because there's always a little pile of treats there. So we want to create a positive association for the dog by having those there. And if you're doing it in your hallway in your apartment building, that's gonna be a little bit easier for you to do. And it's not a long walk, it's air conditioned in here, we're not in the sun, there's not nasty stuff on the ground, and she is practicing with you with the benefit of it being a hallway. There's not a lot of stuff to go here or there. She doesn't strike me as a dog that really goes off the path very much, she just kind of stops, am I correct? Uh, no, some, no, she'll she, Okay, and, and we did talk about sniffing. Sniffing burns almost twice as much energy as not sniffing, so the guardian's gonna let her sniff, 
But, and he does a good job of doing that to begin with. But a lot of times we get frustrated when we have to complete a circuit. So if you're just walking, so the other walk is just for duration. So if you got 20 minutes, set a timer for 10 minutes, walk out your door, take a right or left, and walk until your buzzer happens. If, she only, if you only go half a, half a house because she's sniffing everything, you don't care because you're not trying to complete a circuit. You're just doing 10 minutes of sniffing. Then we cross the street so we have fresh sniffs on the way back and we come back inside. And then afterwards, try to give her some belly rubs. Uh, play with her, um, scratch her by me or whatever the things are. Creating a positive like dessert or reward at the end of the activity is also something that can be really helpful. So she wants to get back home because good things happen to me. Um, all right, so that's um, uh, what's going on with the walk. Text me if you have questions or problems with that. We can make little adjustments. We probably will need to. So don't, be, don't worry about that. I don't charge for that. I want you to call or text me if you have questions. Now I'm going to kind of summarize the other stuff we talked about in the prelude of the session before we went out. We went over marker words and loading exercise. Make sure you walk around. Yes, treat. Yes, treat. I'd like you to do that for four different occasions. Each of those occasions has 12 treats. Yes, treat 12 times as you walk around your place. And I would probably have you do that with yes twice and have your girlfriend do that with yes twice and then do it with a clicker. Click, treat. Take a couple steps. Click, treat. Again, 12 treats. Do that twice. Maybe uh, if you can, remember to do it once today and maybe each one of you do it twice tomorrow. After that, you're done loading. You should be done loading. You might have to do a little bit more. If you click or say yes and she doesn't look at you, then you need to continue loading. But if you say click or yes and she looks at you, then that's what we're looking for. Then now we're going to use that clicker or the yes, the precise moment that Lily does the thing that we want. So if we're walking and she comes to us, yes, click when she arrives and then give her that treat. She sits down, yes, and then we pet her. She gives us eye contact, yes, we pet her. Goes to the dog bed, lays down, poops, drinks water, picks up a toy. Anything that is desirable, it's important to mark and reward. By mark, by saying yes or clicking and giving her a pet or a treat. The more that you do that, the better she, uh, she kind of, the more interested in listening to she is because there's something in it for her. And if we're rewarding her when we're celebrating, she's making all the decisions. We're just saying, good decision. I like you going to the dog bed. I like you coming to me. I like you doing this. That makes her more likely to do those things again in the future. And also creates a little bit of a, I don't want to say dogs want to please us. It's not to please us, but they do like to engage with us. And so if she knows that that makes you happy, and don't be uh, afraid to smile. Dogs can re recognize facial expressions. If you do something funny, don't be stoic. Laugh. Um, you're such a silly girl. Talk to her a little bit. Dogs are like to engage with us. And so those are nice ways for her to understand that, yes, I like it when you come to me. I like it when you walk with me or whatever it is. Um, okay, so uh, celebrating is rewarding her when she chooses to do things on her own that we don't ask for. Manners is when she is maybe perhaps asking for things in a way that's not as appropriate as we like. So every time she nudges me to ask for attention, she's kind of saying, hey man, give me some attention. It's never wrong to pet your dog, but there's a politer way to say that. So when she nudges you or uh, burps on you or barks, tell her to sit one time. If she sits, say yes and pet her under her chin. If she doesn't sit, lean back in the, ch in the couch, go back to playing video games, rub the Buddha belly, um, do something else. So you're not punishing her, but you're letting her know if you do what I ask, there's something in it for you. If you choose not to, that's totally cool. But now I'm on to something else and you're not getting the thing that you wanted. But when she does, you tell her to sit, she does sit, you say your mark word and pet her. So eventually she starts to learn. Every time I sit, you say the mark word and pet me when I choose to do it on my own. And when I ask you for attention, you tell me to sit and the times that I do it, you say yes, and then I get attention. I want attention, so I'm gonna do that for you. I'm gonna sit to ask for attention. And this is uh, called manding, but I, we have hundreds of puppies who have taken our puppy classes. They'll come and sit in front of you, and if you don't start petting, they will resit and resit, because in their mind, that's the polite way of asking for attention. Now, something else I didn't go over in the session, but I'm gonna go over right now, is how to stop dogs from doing unwanted behaviors. And I like to refer to them unwanted versus good or bad. Good or bad implies morality. But your dog didn't chew up the shoes to piss you off. It just chewed up your shoes because it smelled good and I wanted to chew and your shoe happened to be there. So um, uh, if all attention is rewarding for dogs. So if she gets in the trash and we say, Lily, no, that's like giving her a treat. That's telling Lily, if you want my attention, go get in the trash and you'll get it. But we can't have her going in the trash. So we have a conundrum. So the way that I fix that is something called a positive interrupter. So let's see which one she likes best. She just froze there. She didn't look. Puppy, puppy, puppy! 
Oh, she's also chewing on the bully stick. That might be it. Um, or beep, 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 beep. Yeah, you like that one? She looked at that one. So when you say a word, there's a woman who traveled around the world, and no matter what the language is, animals respond when you say a word three or four times in a high pitch frequency and a quick succession. She seemed to like beep, beep, beep. That time she didn't look, but yes. So to do that, all you do is say beep, 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 give her a treat. Take a couple steps, beep, 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 give her a treat. So we want that sound, it's called a positive interrupter. So let's say Lily's over there sniffing the garbage and I don't want to go in the garbage. I say beep, 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 she looks at me. I'm not giving her attention, I'm just making an interesting sound. She turns to see what that sound is. When she looks at me, I say catch. Is that what you say? Uh, check. check, check. And so check means hand target. So she looks at you, say, Check, she runs over, touches her nose to your hand. Make sure you put the treat on your, on her hand so she stays with your hand. Then I give her some carrots, or I take her for a walk, or I do some training, or I do something else. You've redirected her away from it. If you don't give her something else to do, she's gonna go back to doing what she was doing. But this is much better than saying no because we're not accidentally training our dogs that getting in the trash is a great way to get my attention. So we're combining the pause interrupter with the hand targeting cue, uh, and then giving her something else to do. Um, all right, so we also talked about exercise. And uh, because she's got some arthritis, she's a little bit of an older girl, um, walks are great, but walks probably should be a secondary form of exercising for her. And there's another way of exercising mental stimulation. And so brain games. So I recommend the guardian. Uh, he has a snuffle mat. I, there's the one that I like is the Runda, R-U-N-D-A. Get the one that has the tassels. It's got a, uh, a bar around it. So you flip it upside down, all the tassels are going, and then write it up. And then a waterfall, just throw the, toss a kibble on. It'll go down here in between those tassels. She's got to use her nose to sniff, to find it, and then lick it up and get it. This makes feeding like a short walk for her. And it's nice and low impact on her joints. There's also the Omega Paw Tricky Trainer Treat Ball that I like, and I would get the large one of those. Um, and you can put her kibble in that. You'll have to roll it a couple times, but you roll it, and she sees the kibble come out. When she licks it up, yes, yes, every time she licks it up, and then roll it again. After a while, she'll nudge this thing around like it's World Cup soccer. And so now she is getting a low impact way of uh, hunting her food because she's hunting her food or simulated it. She's going to feel better about herself. She's going to have her nose up in the air, feel good. So yes, just like that. And so uh, uh, coming up with some creative ways of feeding her are nice ways. And the guardian has a puzzle. I would do that from time to time as well. Um, if she's licking your guest, you can get her a lick mat or pull out one of those puzzles and let her, because she really likes food, work for her food. She's draining energy. She's occupied. And when she gets done, she's probably going to plop down and, and like she is down, doing now and relax as opposed to licking. Um, let me see. There's also a uh, training is a great way to burn energy for dogs. They're using the muscle. Just keep the training exercises to two, three minutes maximum. Always end on a positive. When you're doing training or behavior, behavior modification for dogs, the last repetition is the most important because that's what they're going to remember the brightest. So you always want to end on a high note. Now, she does like to lick a lot, and uh, for her, the licking might be an oral fixation. She's probably, the, the guardian is guessing that she was a breeder dog at some point because uh, of her nipples and everything else. I'm looking at her teeth, and they are very worn down. That means she's probably been chewing on a lot of things because of anxiety. So just like some people smoke cigarettes, some people twirl their hair, some people do uh, I mean, inappropriate things, whatever it is, we all have ways of coping with that. So um, since she likes to lick, giving her a lick mat with some peanut butter on it and eventually freezing that lick mat is a nice way for her to burn some energy um, and get some mental satisfaction without having to hurt her, to work on her joints. The Guardian just got her some Cosequin, but now she's limping pretty bad uh, because of uh, her arthritis. Now, now that I think about this, I had a dog that had a spinal stroke, which is an interruption of blood flow to the spine, and he had paralysis temporarily with his back legs. This happened when he was about 13, almost 14. I had just put laminate flooring in my house. He couldn't walk on it very well. And I did notice she had some, a little bit of difficulty. You might want to consider getting a runner. And something else you can do, go to a carpet store. They usually will have remnant pieces of like super duper ritzy carpet for some rich guy in Beverly Hills, but they have a little section that's eight foot by six foot. They can't sell it or install it anywhere, but it makes a nice area rug. And so you might find for her that giving her a runway might help her, if you, especially if you notice her slipping, uh, with that arthritis, they just don't have as much strength. And if they're flopping out, that can injure her a little bit more. So just keep an eye on that. And it's a lot cheaper if you go to a carpet store, call around, because you'll get one that'll give you really good carpet, whatever color you want for pretty cheap. And they'll usually cut it for you as well. 
All right, so um, look for ways to get her some mental stimulation every couple of hours. And even if it's just, you know, having her, you could play fetch by throwing her kibble. So sit over here and throw her kibble. We went over cookie in the corner. You can do a version of that. So find it, or, and then she runs over to grab it. Maybe it's way over there where that tennis ball is by your, you know, close to your kitchen. She runs, and then say, come. She runs all the way back to you. You give her a treat. So this is like a simulate of basically an indoor exercise where she's getting food, but you're doing it in a low impact way. And you don't have to worry about the foundations of the whole walk and whether or not she wants to or not. If she plops down in the middle of it, just go back to work or watching TV. She comes back to you, you can practice again. So it's kind of a, a version of fetch, but since she's not a big fetching dog, you just use her food and then call her back and that develops a stronger recall. Um, yeah, I love the old dogs, but I don't like seeing the mage. Um, all right, so uh, let me see. You can also, uh, so the lick mat, get one of those. I think, you know, from a lot of things that you were saying, I think that the licking is a bit of a coping mechanism. She might be OCD as well and just get in the habit of doing it. But it seems like when guests come over, she really compulsively licks a, a, or chews on a toy at, around other dogs and places like that. So that might be a situation where she is licking as a way of self-soothing. Now for dogs, if they shake it off like that, that's a way of releasing anxiety as well. When she does that, I would say your marker word and pet her for that as well. Um, but take note, when she starts licking, maybe start a little, get a notepad and put it right over here. And every time she starts licking, pull out, uh, write the date and time, write what was going on in the moment. Girlfriend was over, friend was over, I just had a heated phone call with the boss or whatever it is, and write what happened right before the licking happened as well. What we're gonna look for is a trend. We might notice that every time guests come over or she gets overly excited, she licks as a compensation. Or if she gets stressed out, or if I have a bad phone call, she starts getting stressed out and she licks. That way, if we know that why she's doing that, then we can kind of hopefully modify our behavior or change the environment a little bit so she's not exposed to that, so she doesn't practice it. Um, have you checked with, had her vet check her thyroid and everything? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we always want to rule out medical that there's nothing medical going on. Um, but she is, you know, at 10, you know, for a dog her size, that's getting up there. Um, so um, I think I said this in the previous video. So get some fresh green beans. Chop them up into little pieces. Now, the first couple times you do it, I would chop them up and then eat one yourself or fake eat it. And then, you know, do that two or three times and ask her if she wants one. She's probably going to want it if you're eating it. You want to make sure she gets into a habit of eating those. And then you can start substituting uh, for a dog her size for a regular meal. I'd probably get about eight to 10 fresh green beans. Don't cook them. Chop them up into little pieces and remove some of her food. And it sounds like we're going to be removing some of her food because we're going to be using them for the walks or for these exercises. So if that's the case, make sure that you are uh, substituting some of that food so, and the fiber from the green beans will help her feel full. Um, okay, um, let me see, what else? Um, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna go back to what I did in the first version of this video where I wasn't recording the audio. So there's a couple versions of what you can do. So when you're going on the walks, and I would have, when your girlfriend's here, I'd have her walking her dog, you're walking Lily, and you're behind. And basically, you're gonna give your girlfriend these high value, probably the tricky trainers, and we don't do this until you get to that corner where she wants to go straight ahead and you wanna go left. Now, what I would have your girlfriend do is put like maybe about a foot away off that access point of where, where she was sitting, one treat, and then about four to six inches away, another treat, six inches away, another treat, six inches. So you have about four or five treats that are about six inches apart in a straight line so she can identify that as a pattern. You might have to go over and point it out to her. You might have to go pick one up, touch her nose and put it down and dropping it will help her see it a little bit better. But the idea is we want Lily to come out and recognize there's a treat trail here that's leading in this direction instead of going the direction across the street. I would try to avoid going this section across the street. Even if it's a nice day and it's longer, you can go there. She already wants to go there and you're already having a challenge for that. Every time you go there, it's kind of like giving an addict a hit of what they're addicted to. She's gonna be more determined to want to go there again. So what I would do is just, we want to create a positive emotional response by creating a treat trail. Having your girlfriend walk 20, 30, 40 paces ahead of you and dropping those treats as she's walking her dog, that means another dog in the neighborhood doesn't find it and your dog has that motivation, probably wants to uh, chase after her and her dog and now there's treats along the way. At first you'll have to point them out but after a while she'll probably be looking for those. Now, the, uh, so that would be option one and I would probably do those at first about every six inches, then about every foot, and about every foot and a half and about every two feet. And as you get practice in this, maybe the third walk or the fourth walk, maybe you have the, 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 the first couple of treats every 10 inches apart. 
and then the other ones are every foot and a half and then three feet apart. Gradually, you're gonna have more duration, but if Lily stops, that means we have too short of a duration. So we wanna have them as many as we need to to keep her motivation and her motivating and going along on the walk. Now that's option one, following your girlfriend and having that treats left there ahead of time. Option two would be just, again, as we talked about, to walk for duration instead of trying to complete that circuit. So if you have 20 minutes, set a 10 minute timer, walk out your door, turn right, and just walk for 10 minutes. And if she only goes a house and a half in 10 minutes, that's fine. When she gets done, cross the street so she has fresh sniffs on the way back, and then walk back. So this way, you're walking until you hear the buzzer. You're not thinking about, she's walking slow, and I'm frustrated she's walking slow, which a lot of us do when our dogs are walking slow. Just like if you're walking with your grandma and she's walking really slow, you're late for the restaurant reservation. She's like, come on. Well, that's all she's able to do. And for her, because she's of arthritis in her age, she needs to have a little bit more of a leisurely pace. So taking out the full circuit and just walking for time kind of takes that distance element out of it. Now, you can also um, uh, practice the walk with me game, and I have a video for that. So if you want a refresher, let me know and I, if you want to show it to your girlfriend. I would practice that in the house. Now, as you're walking backwards and your feet are facing your dog, your cue should be come here. That means come to me. Once you do the transition, you lure her around to your face in the same direction, you need a different word that means we're moving. Um, uh, let's go is the most common one that our clients use. Some people say vamanos, adventure, whatever you want to say. So every time that you're in the house and you're going to start walking or anywhere you're with Lily and you're going to start walking, she's going to walk with you, not with you having to call her. So you know, as soon as you open that door, you know she wants to go outside, say let's go as soon as you open the door and she runs out with you. Elevator, let's go when the elevator door opens. And so you want to time saying that right before she's coming, moving forward and wanting to move forward on her own. After a while, then you're on a walk and she says, I want to sniff this and she sniffs it really long and maybe there's a dog that's struggling that's nearby and you need to get her away. You say, let's go. And her she's going to pop her nose up because that means that we're going on the next adventure. Now, generally speaking, you don't want to try to admit, uh, interrupt them when they're sniffing because you're almost always going to lose to the nose. Isn't that right, Lily? You want to come up here? I do have some good treats for you. We'd like to get you on camera on this one. Yes. There we go. Yes. Lily. It's right there. It's right here. We'll see if she'll get that one. I think she's going to think about it. There we go. Yeah. There you go. Is this where you need some help? Come here, Lily. Oh, there we go. There you go. Oh, you got it. There we go. This is the Lily girl. All right. So, um, so the other thing with that walk with me game, I'd first practice it in your living room. But when you, again, when you transition, you're facing the other direction. Now you're going to say, let's go. And then walk her to the door, walk her to your bedroom, walk her to ba your bathroom and give her a treat. And there's less distractions here. It's easy. It's a short walk. She's in interested in wanting to do it. Um, once you get good at that, then practice in your hallway. The nice thing in your hallway, it's climate controlled. There's no other distractions and the hallway doesn't allow her to go. There's not as much sniffing. Now, again, we want to let her sniff as much as she wants to because it was safe to do so because that burns energy, builds confidence, and she enjoys doing that. But we also want to get her used to walking with us. And for this one, walking in your hallway might be helpful because it's a simulator. It's not outside. It's not in your apartment. So it's a nice in-between. Um, and eventually, again, you want to be walking. You're just going to hold the treat. Uh, let's go, move her forward, yes, and release that treat. So every step, you're shaking another treat. I'd have like 10 treats in this hand and shaking them down. And again, you're going to have, if you're walking on the right side, you're, the leash is going to go to this hand, your treat pouch is on the side closest to your dog, and you can reach in. But you really want to have a whole bunch of treats because you want to keep them against her nose. I call this the imaginary rubber band. So if I lure her this way and she doesn't come, I go right back. So if I lure her, the rubber band pulls it back to her lips at all times. So practice this, and at first you're just a uh, one step, treat, one step, yes, treat, one step, yes, treat. Eventually you go two steps, yes, treat, three steps. But if you go from one to three and she stops following you, go back to one and a, two or one and a half. The goal is we want her to be successful in what we want. I don't really worry about how quickly we're delivering the treats. Um, and the end, end result, the end goal is she's walking with us without stopping. So once you can actually get her to walk with you out without stopping, that's when I would probably do uh, one, two, three steps, 
and then touch your shoulder and immediately go back down to her and try to do it without you stopping either. So we want her to identify that when the, tr when the treat goes to your shoulder, that's the most important time because then it goes straight into my mouth. And you want to do that until she's following along pretty easily. Then I would treat to a shoulder, hold it here for a half second, and then give her the treat. And after a while, you're holding a full second here, then two seconds, three seconds. Eventually, you're walking at the end of the hallway and you're holding a treat. And she's walking along, looking up, wondering when are you going to give me that treat. But we have to go slow. If we hold it here too fast and she stops walking, we hold it up, hold it too long. So at first, the first couple times, it's just boom, boom, and go right into her mouth. Um, okay. Um, uh, I think I, I can't remember what I talked about in the first video for the second one. Lick mat. Get a lick mat. Um, uh, put, start, put peanut butter on it and then start putting it in the freezer after she's done it a couple times. It'll make it last longer. I would write down, because licking is an issue that the guardian uh, doesn't want her to do. And I think that from a lot of the things that were going on, I think that it's, it's related to her having a little bit of stress and anxiety. And it's a soothing, uh, self-soothing or comforting thing for her to do. Get a little notepad that you keep here on your table or whatever. Every time she starts licking you, write down the date and the time and what was going on arguing with a girlfriend, I just had a heated phone call or whatever, and write down what happened right before. What we might identify is there's a triggering event or activity that causes her to feel that she needs to self-soothe. Now, looking at her teeth, she has ground them down a lot, so that tells me that there's anxiety. A lot of dogs chew to release that anxiety and to placate themselves. So the bones and stuff that she's chewed on are the reason why her incisors are not fangs anymore. They're flat, just like a molar. And I don't know if you can see it in the picture there, but yeah, she doesn't really have fangs anymore. I have a dog that's like that. She was so anxious. She's, and hers are halfway down, but she's a border collie mix. Um, and so if we can recognize and identify that there's certain things that cause her to be more anxious, like when people come over, maybe we have that lick mat out ready to go when people come over. So we're channeling her licking to a place that's appropriate. And I would never punish her or chastise her for licking because that's a coping mechanism for her. A lot of dogs, they, when they release anxiety, they shake it off. And if she does that, say yes and pet her. Um, but after a while, she starts to learn that, you know, that this is how I deal with my stress or anxiety. But if you notice that something is stressful or anxious for her, maybe we can make it easier, uh, make it a shorter experience. Like when people come in, I've been here for three hours. That might be way too much for her. Maybe we just have a neighbor pop in real quick, says hello. She gets treats the whole time and then the neighbor leaves. So she doesn't even get a chance to lick and get, gets out of a habit of licking. Uh, we also went over dog body language and uh, cutoff signals. Cutoff signals um, are turn, lowering the head, turning away, ears rotating back, refusing to look at you, looking at you through a lot of the side eye, which we call whale eye, um, uh, walking away from you. Baring teeth is a pretty obvious cutoff signal. Licking lips can be a sign of distress or discomfort. Um, ears rotating back. So what we did is I had the guardian reach over and pet her over her head and she lowered her head and kind of her ears rotated back. That's her way of saying, I don't like that particular activity. Dogs don't generally like it when we reach over and pet them over the head to start the contact. If you love your dog and your dog loves you, eye contact's like a kiss. If you don't know that dog, you give them direct eye contact, that's pretty challenging. Walking straight up to a dog is confrontational. Leaning over a dog is intimidating. When dogs want to play, uh, dominate another dog, they'll put their paw on top of their head. That's how we meet dogs usually. We make eye contact, we walk straight up to them, we lean over and we pat them on top of the head. A lot of dogs learn to nip and bite because of that inappropriate approach and that causes the people to go away. So the best place to pet a dog is under the chin, on the chest or the shoulders and the guardians notice that she seems to like it better under her chin. So that causes her nose to come up. That's a proud, proud body mechanic. So I'd like you to get in the habit of petting her under her chin or on her chest or on her shoulders. Now, if you're petting her here, you can kind of eventually work up on top of that, that's fine unless she gives you cutoff signals. She turns her head away, then she's, that's her way of saying no. And just like our girlfriend or our boyfriend or wh whoever we're dating, if just because I've held my partner's hand doesn't mean I get to hold her hand whenever I want. If she's mad at me, I lose that privilege. And even though I mean holding her hand as a way of endearment or love you, if she doesn't feel that way, it doesn't really matter how I feel. A lot of people think I'm petting your dog, not if I don't want to be petted. So have people hold their hand up in front of her nose and if she nudges them, say, yeah, she likes being petted on her chin and then they pet her under her chin. I know you don't have a problem with this, but just having a dog that it feels more secure and confident that people are listening to me allows me to feel more relaxed. And so and if you hold your, if somebody holds her hand up and she turns her head to the side, she's saying, I don't want to be petted. Just tell them, hey, she's had a long day. She's tired. I need to get her some water and just turn and walk away. Don't put her in a situation where she has to do it herself. Um, now, we also talked about body language, um, uh, and so 
Leading, uh, so an open mouth to a closed mouth is a warning. Hard, unblinking eyes is a warning. Staring is a warning. And if a dog's like relaxed, like, that's a pretty big warning. I turned away, I closed my mouth, my eyes got big and I got stiff and I stared. Those are like five or six waves of dogs saying, I'm uncomfortable with what you're doing. Um, so if you can learn to read your dog's body language, are the ears, right now her ears are back. She's a little anxious right now. So if you notice every time she's licking, her ears are back, that might be an indicator that she's licking as a coping mechanism. If you see her ears more off to the side, that's more relaxed and comfortable. So what I like to do is I like to identify how my dog looks when they're neutral, and then I look for uh, uh, differences when they're excited, they're fearful, they're stressed, or whatever it is. Then I can start seeing and recognizing her ears are back, her tail's tucked, she's hunched over, she's not comfortable, and then she starts licking me. She might, be not, be un she not, might not be comfortable with the leaf blower guy outside or whatever else is going on. So if we are mindful of that and we can kind of remove whatever that is, that might make her feel a little bit less stressed and that could help her lick less. I would also try to get her, she really liked that collagen stick, I would get her a cow kneecaps are one of my dog's favorites. So if you notice there when guests come over, she does get a little anxious, but you're gonna have guests come over, it's, an, it's a low level of anxiety, then maybe I'm gonna pair that with a lick mat, a collagen stick, a bully stick, a kneecap, a cow's ear, cow's ears are a little bit fatty, so maybe a kneecap, because there's flesh on that, and after that she can just chew and gnaw on that cartilage, and eventually she'll work it down to be a tiny little bone. But that might be a nice way for her to relieve some of that anxiety. Um, she's already worn down her teeth, so it's not gonna be a big deal. Um, all right, I'm trying to think. Um, feeding her a snuffle mat twice a day is a nice way to burn energy. Good Omega Paw, Tricky Trainer Treat Ball. That's something also for guests. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else I covered that you want me to touch on? Uh, no. Now, yeah, uh, now, if there is something that new that comes to you and we didn't talk about it here, I don't care. Text me. If I don't hear from you, I assume everything's going great. Now, my clients that get the best results are the ones that watch this video once a week until when they watch this video, there's nothing new. I throw a lot at you. So just keep on watching this once a week. Watch it with your girlfriend so you can kind of go over the stuff together. And then if you have questions or things stop working, text me. Remember, dog training is not a linear process. You're going to have good days and then suddenly you have a bad day. Doesn't mean it's not working, just she's having an off day. So just keep at it. Try to be more consistent. So try to do one of those when you get to the point where you're doing the walking, and I would probably you know, focus a little bit more on the inside with the walk with me game and stuff, but try to, you know, don't go on the way that she wants to go, just go on that other one. And every once in a while, if she's really tired, maybe stop somewhere and just give her a little belly rub if you can. If you gotta get her to the home, that's fine, and that's why you might wanna just take that path and walk on your block and not even go around the block so you don't have to worry about getting too far away. Um, I'm trying to think, Lily. One last little thing, she's, she's out. Let's see if we can get her back over here. If you're holding a treat like this, if you can see, you can not really see that my hand is empty because my fingers are curled up. As I lower my hand, I'll do it sideways, as I lower my hand, it starts my fingers kind of curling up to protect the dog from viewing it. For dogs, the lower you go, the more accessible it is for them. So when I was getting Lily to come when we didn't have a treat, I was going like this and curling my finger down and she came towards me. Lily! Her buddy just walked in, so I'm not going to be able to get her to That's totally cool. Uh, that, that's totally fine. Um, so, well, this is Lily's roadmap to success. Um, call me if you have any questions or problems. I don't care how long it is. There she goes. It's like, I got to say hi to my buddy. This is Lily's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it. That's, we're, we're done. <laughs>